Okay, so you guys have to check this out. All right, I've got a new intro that uh, my friend helped me make, and I feel like it's too much, but I also feel like it's awesome. So please watch this. Okay, was it too much? I feel like maybe it was too much. I don't know. It, it It's still pretty awesome, though. If uh, my friend helped me make that, she is a freelance digital artist. And if you need anything done, like logos or anything, you can get at her at High Poly Art on uh, Instagram. But anyways, I like astronomic filters. I have a lot of astronomic filters. Um, I've got the Deep Sky set here. Uh, several planetary ones and the ones we're going to be talking about today are the six nanometer max fr filters um these are that is not a six nanometer max fr filter uh there's the other one. uh these are filters that are specifically designed for fast optical systems like f3 and below now um the problem with narrowband imaging and fast systems is that the light is coming in at such a steep angle that the filter actually cuts a lot of it off because you're trying to fit something, you know, you're trying to fit a square peg through a round hole, essentially. And uh, you have to shift the bandwidth of the filters over in toward, toward the, the blue end of the spectrum, uh, toward the shorter end of the spectrum, to get the get the light to go through properly or else you're blocking a ton of light um so you need special filters for like your rasas and your hyperstar and i've been using hyperstar so i tried out the max fr filters and uh i've been extremely impressed with them not only do are they, they're well made well packaged um high quality coating on them i've cleaned them kind of recklessly several times and haven't scratched them yet um and uh, speaking of the coating, on a lot of cheaper filters, when you do flats, it'll be blotchy, you know. It just doesn't look good. This is a flat from uh, from the sulfur filter, and you can see it's really nice and homogenous. In fact, they're so nice and homogenous that I use the same set of flats. I use, I would like use the hydrogen flats on all the different filter sets, and it worked great um, because they're they're all very well matched. Uh, they're thin, they're only a millimeter thick, so you're not going to really jack up your back focus. Um, overall, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, another thing to talk about is the shipping. Um, only waited about two or three days from Germany. Uh, from the time I ordered it, they were in my office in like three days. So the shipping from Astronomic was incredible. Uh... But, I, and I did a, a lot of different things, as you can see right here. Uh, the first question everybody has is the halos. How are the halos? And uh, we'll take a look here. This is, uh, these are 60 second exposures on Vega. And uh, this is the hydrogen. You can see absolutely no halo. We've got slight diffraction around here from my homemade cable router. Um, but that's not a halo. But there is no halo here, absolutely no halo. This is and this is no flat applied either. Uh, but yeah, this is just a 60 second exposure on Vega, one of the brightest stars that you'll see out there. And that was the hydrogen. Uh, this is the sulfur, 60 second exposure, absolutely nice and clean, except for my cable stuff. But yeah, overall, absolutely no trace of a halo. And then the uh, the coup de gras is the oxygen. It is hard to get an oxygen filter with no halos. And even this has a slight glow. That's not a halo, but that's a slight glow on the oxygen. But there's no halo. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely tell it's, it, there's a little bit more going on on the oxygen, but it's still nice and clean. Uh, so that's a, de a definite win in the halo department. Um. Then, uh, let's see, what should we talk about? I did, this is one hour on the Pac-Man Nebula with the hydrogen filter. Um, I was just kind of casting around for something to do, and it looks really good. Uh, these are two-minute exposures in the Hyperstar, and I went and 
Use Starnet to take the stars out of it so you can see just how much of the nebulosity that hydrogen alpha is picking up. You can see all of the entire frame is covered with nebulosity and that's that gives the much more accurate impression that you're actually looking at a pocket of light in opaque gas. The, the, the dark area here is actually the foreground and the, uh, the glowing cave here is in the background and uh, the, uh, just the contrast that you get out of that six nanometer filter really helps you bring you know bring all this really subtle nebulosity out and you know you start to rack up like five or six seven hours of integration with this filter and you're gonna bring out something special from that image uh, now let's see this was this was one hour each channel an SHO palette on the uh, the elephant trunk nebula uh, overall really happy with this you can see that I mean these these are these are basically split and for that wide of a field to uh, to have these they almost split right here that's that's some resolution that's you know that's showing how tightly controlled you're keeping your stars with these filters um, so yeah that's a nice SHO image that's only one hour per channel um, then I I'm not very happy with this I this was rushed processing the color is bad but uh this was actually four hours on each filter and yeah I did not do any kind of star reduction I was careless with the color but uh, you can see that you've just got really nice contrast there this, there's a lot of good raw material here to work with and I could definitely do a better job uh, with this processing and I will eventually but uh, yeah this is obviously the bubble nebula region uh, that's four hours with each filter mixed into something resembling an SHO palette and I did a test to see what kind of signal you could get with a much slower system so I put it all on the back of my Edge HD and shot at F10 now this is a filter designed for an F2 system being used at F10 now the transmission was notably very very low I was you know just above the uh, the dark noise or the 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 read of uh, the dark current on the sensor uh, but you know again the contrast of the, the narrow band allows you to pull a signal out of thin air um, so this this was uh, only one hour of integration uh, these are five minute exposures on an F10 system using the max FR filters and uh, I think this is tremendously it's it's grossly oversampled this is like 0.2 uh, arc seconds per pixel but uh, that it looks really good uh, I'm actually gonna go and finish this up with the other filters I'm I'm probably gonna do 10 hours per filter on this image and uh, mix that together and see what it looks like but uh yeah really impressive so and this is extreme extreme at f10 so if you're using like even an average focal ratio like a four to a seven uh, you're, you're still going to be able to use these filters. If you get them for your Rasa or your Hyperstar, you will still be able to use them uh, on, a, on slower systems so you don't have to buy an entire additional set of narrowband filters. So yeah, this looks really, this was the hydrogen, of course. It, the sulfur, the oxygen would take a lot more than uh, one hour to build up that kind of signal. But overall, these filters are amazing. Uh, so you should definitely get them if you're thinking about a set of filters for your fast optical system that is the the astronomic max FRs